YouTube, Komodo Gaming here, bringing you guys another episode of Scrap Mechanic Underwater Base. Now, first off, I want to thank you guys for all the amazing support on the first episode. I was actually kind of overwhelmed. I mean, it was just crazy. Uh, I got tons of suggestions, and I've got a pretty big update here today. I figured since the first episode did so well, we better follow this up with something pretty awesome. So, I've got a lot of things to show you. Uh, we've got escape pods, we've got a new living quarters, we've got a garage with a forklift, uh, we've got a storage area for the sub, it's just a whole bunch of things. So, anyways, don't forget to comment below with more suggestions for the base. I'm still going off your guys' feedback for that. And remember to leave this video a thumbs up if you are enjoying Scrap Mechanic, and let's jump right into this. Alright, so it's time to show you guys the new stuff here today. Now, I'm not going to go through all the old stuff again. If you want to watch the first episode, that's down in the description, and I'll flash it up in the top right. Uh, but yeah, uh, we're going to touch a bit on the surface here. The only thing that's changed up here is the whole fact that the catwalk, which ended right here at the uh, top generator, uh, it now wraps all the way around, and I expect to be adding some stuff up here. Uh, you guys have had some really good suggestions for like docks and just a whole bunch of stuff that would be on the surface. So we'll add some stuff uh, probably at a later episode. But I wanted to show you guys that real quick. Now if you're wondering where the mini sub is, it is currently underwater in the storage facility that we built. So we'll check that out here in a second. Now, you're probably wondering what these are. These are pallets for the forklift. We have a new underwater forklift that Scrubmaster built. Uh, these can be loaded up on the service elevator and taken down. Now, at first we were going to stick another forklift up here to move them around, but we have a little one of those rolling dollies, which it doesn't actually work, but that would be what we would load up the uh, service elevator with uh, because there's just not enough room right now for a, another forklift. So, say if the helicopter were to come down, uh, bring some new pallets, we'd be able to load them up on the service elevator and take them down. Now, to load something up on this elevator... Uh, let's go ahead and put that over here. Uh, the best thing to do, because Scrap Mechanic likes to lag a lot with collisions, uh, is to... Let's go ahead and weld this down to the elevator and we'll take it down. Because if this thing is loose on the elevator, it doesn't like it at all. Actually, we need to grab this... Let's add a block here. Let's just grab this by the center point. So, service elevator's loaded. Take it down below. We'll pick up that pallet here in a second. Uh, I've got a couple more. I'll probably leave these out on the world if you guys want to play with these. But the uh, Scrubmaster forklift's going to be on his workshop. So, we need to head down below real quick. So, we're going to go through the main building. Uh, nothing has changed here. Let's go ahead and close that. But, oh, oh, no, 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 no. Elevator. I'm supposed to go. You know, I forget. That glass is kind of see-through. Okay, I can walk through. I don't know why I clicked that. All right, so let's go down below the surface here. Now, you can see... There's a lot that has been added here. Kind of need to get below the water line to see it. But uh, yeah, we've got a lot of things that we've added here today. One major complaint from the last episode is about the airlock that this elevator goes down in. And I'll show you guys that I've changed that. But yeah, today we have the living quarters, which is over there. We've got two escape pod systems for the base. And here's the new storage facility over here to the right. Uh, there's a new uh, storage area for vehicles. And we've got something uh, that we've changed with the service elevator, too, so we're going to go over all that. But yeah, uh, let's go ahead and get down to the bottom here. Okay, so one of the main complaints about the last episode about this little airlock area was the whole fact that when I hit this switch here, it would alternate the doors. And a lot of people are like, well, it's an airlock. You need to be able to set in between them and have both doors closed. So we can call this kind of like a decompression chamber airlock thingy. <laughs> I don't know exactly how to say that. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and hit this button here. It's going to give you some warning lights to tell you to basically stay clear of the door. And this should close right up. Okay. So you go through your little decompression here, and we're ready to go into the base. So there we go. So those have finally changed. Uh, thanks for all the suggestions about that. So this is where we stopped last episode. This is all we had down here underwater. And we have grown quite a bit. So, we've got two new hallways. I'm trying to think which one I want to go to first. They're both actually really cool. I think we're going to check out the uh, living quarters first. So, I have these new hallways. These are all, I want to call these modular. 
I might actually stick this stuff on the workshop depending on if you guys want like hallways, the escape chambers, the life pods. We might stick this all on here that way you guys can build your own base. But of course you can always download the base in the description so let's walk through here. So this is our new living quarters. Now there's a little bit that's going to need to be added to this but I'm actually extremely happy with the way this came out. So. We're going to call these our little life pods. Uh, these are little bitty living quarters. Imagine like itty bitty apartments. Uh, there's not much to these. So we can walk through. We've got eight of these pods here right now. And I have to say, I would love to live in one of these because the view is spectacular. So let's go into pod six here. Open the door. Uh, let's go ahead and close that. Turn on our light in here. There we go. Check this out. Uh, we are using the iKey. I think it's an iKey mod. I could be wrong. Uh, there's several different mods that have furniture in it. But yeah, we're using the furniture mod. It was linked in the uh, first episode because we had a couple pieces of furniture up in the top building. But yeah, this is the living quarters. So you can sleep in here. Now you're probably wondering, like, where's the bathroom? Where's the kitchen area? Uh, that's going to be like a cafeteria area. And we're probably going to have like a almost like a public bath slash I guess we can call it like a washroom uh, eventually make a pod for that so this is just your basic necessities you've got a little desk in here you've got your uh, little bed in here you've got a little area to wash and store things but what I really love about these check out the view that is awesome so you can see the surface up there uh, there's not much privacy but obviously we're not supposed to have privacy we're in the ocean it's about as private as you get so yeah, you can see somewhat into the other pods here. I did add quite a bit of shrubbery. Uh, you guys were really uh, talking about how we needed to add more rocks and more plants out here. So it kind of makes it look a little bit more dense down here. So let's go out here. Now I haven't decided which one's mine. I might build my myself maybe a little house. But Mr. Scrubmaster, the guy that's been helping me a lot with these, uh, he kind of chose pod number one and yeah, there's some stuff going on in here. Like that. <laughs> so yes, I, I gave him the freedom to decorate his pod. He's got some ducks. Uh, we apparently have a big monster egg, some glowing plants. Uh, there's some Lego bricks and there's a body up on top of his ceiling. So we're not gonna talk about this room anymore and we're just gonna close that. But yes, that's Scrub Master's quarters right there. So yeah, that's the living quarters. Uh, we'll eventually build like a little bathhouse pod. It will probably be at the end of this hallway. But, you guys were asking for a place to live in down here, so, yeah, if you play this with your friends, definitely come down here, claim a pod, decorate it yourself. But, let's move on to the next thing. Now, down there, we will address that here in a second. That is this escape pod chamber. That was probably one of the most requested things for this build, and there's actually two of these. Uh, it's kind of symmetrical, so you've got one here in this hall, in the identical hall on the other side, there's another one. So there's two opportunities to get out of this thing if for some reason something bad happens. So let's go on to the next side. Okay, so here in the right side, we're going to come down here. Uh, it's identical to the other side. So where the living quarters would have been on the other side of the base, this is actually a power room, storeroom, vehicle bay. Now we're going to need a bigger one of these because I do eventually want a, like a big sub down here, but this is kind of a what we have now for our current vehicles. So as you can see down there, that's the uh, another one of the escape pods. We will do that last. That's actually pretty cool. So yeah, this is kind of one of those things we're going to have to use our imagination here uh, for this vehicle bay because there's a couple things that I kind of have to explain how they work. So let's go ahead and open this door here. There we go. Close that. We've got sliding doors on most of the buildings, most of the little sections down here. Just in case something were to happen, we can seal off areas. So this is the start of the power room and there's a little bit of an equipment room in here so uh, we can walk down here. Actually, do I have the lights on? Let's go ahead and turn those on there. Alright, so we can walk down here. Uh, here's one of the main power generators. You can actually switch it on here. You can hear there is actually a motor in there. So yeah, we've got that activated. Over here, this is like a little gear area where you would get your scuba gear. You can see some air tanks over here. I uh, got some gear down here. I normally use these blocks. I don't know what kind of blocks these are, but these kind of look like lockers. So you'll see me use these a lot in my builds. So yeah, I've got like a little locker area. You can get dressed. 
and prepare to go out in the airlock. So the main vehicle bay, this kind of works in a weird way and I have to explain this. So we're going to go into here. This is the airlock. So you're going to want to lock yourself right here. So you can see there's tanks on the side. Now this is going to work in two ways. In order to get these vehicles out, we're going to need to flood the room in here. So We'll do that by hitting this button here. Of course, this is all imaginary. We're not going to actually flood it with water. That would be amazing, but it's not going to happen. So, we're going to hit that. It's going to set the alarms off, let you know that the room is flooding ahead. Of course, if you're coming out, you want to drain the room. So, we're doing that. Um, I need to probably put it on like a timer or something. So, let's go ahead and shut that off. And say this thing's flooded here, this room would flood up here, and then the doors would open. Of course, you've already got your scuba gear on, so you're good to go. So, here we are in the garage slash storage area. So, there's several ways to do this. Now, we've got our forklift right here. I can always open the garage door here. We probably want to close this airlock over here. There we go. Uh, let's turn on some lights. Okay, so this is the uh, underwater forklift. This was built by Mr. Scrubmaster. So we're gonna go ahead and move this real quick and get it ready to uh, load up some of those pallets that we brought down with the service elevator. So we've got that. Here is the sub from the last episode. Last episode, this was on the launcher up on the surface. Uh, it's now down here. This is kind of a temporary parking situation, I think. But you're probably asking, well, can you launch the sub from down here? And yes, you can. So. In order to launch this sub, we've got another switch over here. This little control panel here. We're going to click that. There we go. And there goes the roof. So now you can just drive the sub straight out of here. You don't have to go out the garage door. So you can always just hop in. I'll just give this as an example. Let's go and hop into the sub. Let's hit the top latch here. There we go. Climb down into it. Boom. Close it. And we're here. So we're ready to launch. I might have this parked a little bit. I, I used the lift to park this. I might be a little close to the uh, door opening, uh, but we're going to try it anyways. So let's activate. Nope, yep, see, I was a little close to the door there. Uh, my bad. Yeah, you don't want to park it that close. Whoa, we are bending the roof. Oh, things have gone wrong. Things have gone wrong. Let's go and kill it. There we go. So yeah, it's a tight fit. Eventually I do want to have like a, a sub launcher, but you get the idea as to what's going to happen there as far as you launching out of this garage. So yeah, let's get out of here. Okay, so the sub launch is morally supposed to look like this. Uh, I do eventually want to build a dedicated sub launcher, but that's kind of what we have down here. Uh, you guys would, or were wanting to see some sort of sub garage. So, ideally, you'd want that to happen. Now, we'll have to do a bigger bay at some point, because I do want, like, a, a sub workshop to uh, do some work on the subs. So, anyways, we're going to move on to the forklift, but, yeah, this is the uh, Scrubmaster sub, once again, from last episode. It will be on his workshop if you want to download this. So, let's move on to the forklift area. All right, so we are ready to do a little bit of work down here. Now, the garage door is open and ready to load up some supplies in. Of course, at the beginning of this episode, we used the service elevator to take some supplies down here. So we need a way to load it up in the garage. Now, I really wish this was actually darker down here. I know inside of the building, it kind of gives you that underwater effect. Uh, down here, not so much. So that's one thing. I don't really know how to change that to really make it darker. Uh, so let's go ahead. We're going to go into here. Got our service elevator ready to go. It's down at the bottom. We've got our pallet down here. So we're going to go ahead and slide our forks there. A little further. I love forklifts. Everything's really awesome since we got these pistons. So we're going to do that. Let's hit the two key. It's going to tip these back. We should be able to just slide right back with this here. There we go. Got to be kind of careful sometimes with forklifts and pallets. And I really have my lift in the way. There we go. So yeah, if you need to lift this, you can of course hit the one key and lift it up higher. Uh, I don't really have too many high shelves at the moment. Uh, we have a little bit of a lower shelf in here, so we're going to go in. Got to be careful with this. Don't want to hit the gas. Don't want to get on and off the gas too much with this thing. Uh, so we're going to drive around here. We've got our little ramp that's going to take us back into the garage. So let's go ahead, kind of turn. It's got a little bit of a wide turning radius. Initially, this was tried with a uh, suspension glitch. And it just flipped out. It did not like 
the uh, the whole setup down here, especially once you got on these uh, tile blocks uh, for the floor. The suspension glitch just basically didn't even work anymore. So let me get the camera down here that way I can see what I'm doing. Uh, you're gonna turn here. We've got a shelf over here that you can load off of. So oh oh oh, don't tip, don't tip. We're good, we're good. Okay, so we're gonna get about right in this area. Let's back off just a bit. We are tipping. It's not good. Let's go ahead and lower the forks here. And this one has a piston that you can push the uh, the pallet off, so we're gonna push that on the shelf. That was a bit messy. Uh, I'm not the best forklift operator. Maybe we can get Moombo down here since he's a professional forklift operator, and maybe he can unload some pallets for us. So yeah, you've got that. You've got a parking spot over here. I know initially we had the sub over here, but you can also park your uh, forklift out of the way and hit the, uh, actually you can just hop out of this. The three key, or the four key, actually opens the glass up there. So, we've got our new supplies loaded in. We probably need to change those pallets from wood, because I imagine underwater, the wood would be completely soaked. And a lot of this stuff would be strapped down. I know some people question the service elevator, the whole fact that it was, it just goes straight underwater. Uh, a lot of this would have to be strapped down in order to get it there. So, anyways, we've got this loaded up. We've got our, some new supplies in here. Uh, once we're ready to go, we can get somebody that's in the control room to drain this room and drain the airlock. We'd come right back in, do what we need to do. If we need to get some supplies through here, we can have, of course, both of these open. This would be kind of one of those things I wouldn't want to operate this because uh, accidentally hitting the wrong button and letting water rush into the base, that would be pretty bad. So, yeah, we've got it drained now, so we'd be able to load the uh, new supplies and get them into the residents of the underwater base. So yeah, that's the new storage area down here. I think it came out really nice. I love the overhead glass, the whole fact that you can see up to the surface, and just the way the glass forms in this whole building here. So let's go ahead and close everything up. We are done in this area. There we go. I think it's time to go over a bit of an emergency drill here and what would happen if something really bad were to happen to the base. So let's go do that. Okay, so say something terrible is happening to the base. The alarm is sounding. We need to get out of here. Of course, maybe we can't make it to the service elevator. Maybe something happened to it. Well, the thing you guys wanted to see the most here was some sort of escape pod. So we've got those here today. So you get two options to make it out alive. You can go to the right one or to the left. These are going to be somewhat centralized. So you might be able to get to one of these before you die. Of course, we could try to lock off some of the cabins, say wherever the breach is. Uh, we would have to lock off those with the doors, but if it's a breach, say in this main area, you're gonna need to get to the escape pod. So we're gonna run over here. Uh, we got blast doors here. You wanna hit the blast door on the escape pod. Hopefully, you know, everybody's in here. We can close the door. That way everybody's safe. And we're going to launch the escape pod. So we have the pod here. We're going to open the door right over here. It's a, kind of a tight fit. And you can climb in. Now, on this map, if you want to, you can keep these things loose. I have them welded down at the moment to prevent lag. But you're going to need to break this weld right here. So now we have a loose escape pod. So what you're going to need to do, get your crew in and get ready to launch. You're going to hit this switch here on the right. It's going to give you a time delay. Say it's going to fill the room up with water. That way you're not trying to open the top door because, of course, the pressure wouldn't allow you to. So it's going to fill up with water. You're going to be able to blast up the open the top doors and you'll be able to turn on the, uh, the escape pod here and get out. So we're ready to go. We're going to get in position here. Let's go ahead and hit that. We're going to want to close the pod. Red seat is the captain's chair. You've got a little light in here. There's your lights. And you're ready to launch with the three key. Now, you see the uh, doors just burst open at the top. Of course, by now we would have launched. But for the sake of the video, I just wanted to show you the doors opening there. All you've got to do is hit the three key. The ignition's going to start and it's on a timer. So it will release itself. So let's go ahead and do that. There we go. And we are escaping the base. You're going to blast out the top here. Ignition shuts off. Ideally, you'd have a parachute and you would float gently down to the water here and be ready to be rescued. Instead, no, we just came crashing back down and died. But that's how that works. Now, if we had water physics, that would be amazing. I'm sorry. I would love to see that happen, but I don't know if that's ever gonna happen in Scrap Mechanic. That's why we're kind of playing pretend with the base here. So here's a little bit closer inspection of the pod. 
You can open it up here. It's got a little fire extinguisher, say something bad were to happen. Of course, you see it lit up. And once you're floating on the surface, uh, you can always get out the top hatch here. Twist that open, climb out, set on top. Of course, it's like emergency orange. Every escape pod or little mini sub that's attached to a big vessel is always a really bright color. That way, rescue operations can spot it out in the water. So, that's our escape pod. You can always reattach this. It'll be ready to go. Just get your weld point and stick it back in on one of the uh, escape pods over here. Of course, I've got another one over there ready to go. Or, if you want to, you can just sit it, set it in there. I mean, it's not really a big deal. I just welded them down, like I said, because of lag. So yeah, that's our escape pod. We would be up to the surface and hopefully safe. So, anyways, that's about it. We've got quite a bit covered here today. Of course, we had the big garage. Oh yeah, over here, this is a new little thing that Scrub Master built. This is a water system uh, that can pump in the water uh, for the base. Uh, somebody, I think, actually suggested that we have some sort of system like that, so you can somewhat see it from the inside. Uh, let's go inside real quick, and uh, we're going to wrap this up. All right. So, wrapping up the episode here, of course, we had the skate pods, the garage, and the new living quarters. Uh, if you have any suggestions for this base build, and even a name for the base. I think eventually we're going to have to name this whole complex. Uh, comment below if you'd like to like and subscribe. Everything helps my channel. Also, if you want the download for this, I will have it in the description. I will have the mods listed to run this uh, map here also in the description. And I really do also want your guys' opinion on one more thing. Uh, would you guys want me to... I can have these all in like little modular parts like the hallways, the life pods and all sorts of things that I could put on the workshop that so that maybe you guys can actually build your own water, underwater base say if you don't want to download this one here so anyways folks I hope you enjoyed this episode thanks for all the support recently it's been absolutely awesome especially on the first underwater base episode you guys were absolutely crazy about it and that actually it felt really good it really motivated me here today to try to bring you guys as big of an update as possible. I also do want to thank Mr. Scrubmaster for the uh, help on this little episode here today. Now, I was sent a couple items for the underwater base that we weren't able to cover here, cover here today because obviously we had a whole lot of stuff to do in the first place, but I will get around to looking at some of those items and see if we can use them here in the underwater base. But anyways, folks, hope you have a good day, and we will see you guys next time here in Scrap Mechanic. Thank you.